What's going on, NBA fans? Welcome back to another episode of NBA Central. On today's topic, I got to talk about Kevin Durant's comments regarding his legacy. Is Kevin Durant being honest about his legacy? That he In the interview that he did with the Athletic, he talked about it. Y'all already know. I'm going to talk about it right after this. Thank you for tuning in to the number one place for your basketball fix, NBA Central, hosted by the Cognac Boys. All right, y'all. If y'all like what y'all listening to today, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. But the topic is, is Kevin Durant being honest about his legacy? Simply put, Kevin Durant had an interview with Shams and basically said, I don't care about the legacy. But before we get into the comments, I want to give a little bit of context of the journey of Kevin Durant. First, Kevin Durant started with the Seattle Supersonics before they became the Oklahoma City Thunder. He stayed there for a number of years, became an MVP, had the 73 and down, the seven in his last season, had the 73 and nine Warriors down 3 1. He took that L that following year, just a couple months. I mean, just a couple months later, he went on to join Golden State. While in Golden State, my man became a two time champion and a two time finals MVP. And he was the, the guy, excuse me, he was the, in fact, the best player on that team. Nobody could take that from him. But, then things started to go left. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people started, to, first of all, the people questioned the move to go to state in the first place. And then secondly, a lot of people questioned the move on why would he, then they questioned why he would even leave Golden State. So he goes to Brooklyn, joins up with Kyrie, came and Kyrie get there. It's already a little iffy. James Harden get there. James Harden stayed there for a little while, got up out of there. And it was just a complete disaster, man. They never made it to the Eastern Conference Finals and they never made it out the second round. It was just bad, man. For it was just a bad thing that happened up in Brooklyn. But nobody could still deny that the man is still one of the most talented players in the league. Some people even may have them have Kevin Durant as their number one player in the NBA. And that's fine. You can't deny when he's healthy, he's a problem. So even when he's 90%, 80%, 70%, he's still better than most players in the NBA. But now my guy's now in Phoenix. And they got a lot of championship aspirations and goals going on up in Phoenix right now. So Kevin Durant, he got to go ahead and what a lot what's going on in our mind is we saying like, bro, in a couple in like a year or two, you got to be having a whole championship out there in Phoenix simply because you got Chris Paul that's aging, but you got still you got two young corner, cornerstone guys that can, you can ultimately help bring a title to, and DeAndre Aiden and Devin Booker, those two guys are very solid players. I, I like Devin Booker a little bit more than Aiden, and some people might feel differently, but that's okay. Uh, but, all right, now on to the stuff. Kevin Durant did an interview with Shams in the Athletic. He pretty much came out and he was asked about his legacy. And he, he, he came out and responded and said this. He said, I don't care about legacy. I used to. I used to want to carve out a lane or space in this game for myself that people can remember. But it became too much of a thing it become it, it became too much of a thing now it just becomes too much of a focus on other people what he's done what he's done comparisons before we wasn't doing all this debating i cared about it i'm about to but uh i'm about to be in the same breath as these top guys it was big so there you have it the man kevin durant said that he used to care but now he does not care and I can I can feel him on that, man, because he used to he definitely used to care because I believe he gave seven, eight seasons. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comment box to OKC. And it was always when is Kevin Durant going to get back to a championship? When is Kevin Durant going to win his first championship? He didn't. You know, a lot of people was questioning that he cared enough to be like, All right, I'm, I'm going to go go make basketball easy. I'm going to go ahead and join the Golden State Warriors. Whether you like the decision or not, that was his decision to make. I personally did not like it, but at the end of the day, that's his career. He go ahead. Now he's a champion. So now he goes in and win the championship, and people say that they could possibly three-peat. Now the turmoil is still start kicking it up to where a lot of people, including myself, was diminishing those championships early on. You know what I'm saying? So he hearing that, like, okay, let me – I don't, I don't, let me just preface this by saying, I don't know if this is how he's thinking 100%. This is just from the outside looking in. So a lot of the rumblings go ahead and happen. You know why he was in Golden State? Like, 
He can't do it on his own. Look what LeBron James did. When LeBron James left, he went to Miami, and then he came back to Cleveland, and he won. So a lot of people started trying to put that narrative off on Kevin Durant. And right, for, I understand it to an extent, but at the same time, the man is still a two-time champion, and most NBA greats are not even champions at all. Like, whether you like it or not, you still can't take the two championships away from him. So, you know what I'm saying? He goes to Brooklyn. Brooklyn, they at one point, I believe Brooklyn had the greatest – potentially the greatest offensive trio in NBA history. But it, it just proved to be a dud. When they got when they got James Harden to pair with Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant, I thought that was going to be vicious because James Harden was going to be the point guard and Kyrie was going to be the off-ball guard and then Kevin Durant. And all three of these guys are three-level sc- – well, all these guys are offensively talented. I wouldn't say James Harden is a three-level scorer, in my opinion. You never, much, you don't really. He's either driver to the basket or a three-point shot, but he's not the topic for the day. But that did not work out. He had the potential, I believe. If his foot doesn't hit on the line, he does go to a finals. But the reality is, is that his foot was on the line, and he did not go. He did not advance to the following round or the finals. So that's what it was. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. That's what happened. Those are the facts. His foot was on the line, and we can always go back and, you know, say what is, what is. But the reality is his foot was on the line, and the Brooklyn Nets really never panned out to be anything when it came out to the who the vaccine, when it came out to what happened on January 6th, when it came out to just injuries and a bunch of other things, lack of uh, leadership, lack of culture, bad culture, all that, all of the above. It was a complete disaster. Then my man moves on. And I think that's when he pretty much said, I don't really care. Like, at this particular moment, bro, some people, I'm going to keep it a buck. They, they, they're they they're not criticizing his basketball play. They're criticizing him personally at this point. You know what I'm saying? I believe that's unfair. I believe you should keep it within the lines. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to criticize somebody. But at the end of the day, it's his decision. I believe regardless of how he finishes, he's still a top 15 NBA player of all time. You know what I'm saying? And it's ridiculous, you know what I'm saying, that some people have has to de- even debate that. Keep in mind that this guy is a seven-footer with a dribble better than most big men in the top ten. You know what I'm saying? In with an offensive game up there with a mid-range game that's up there with Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan. You know what I'm saying? So you got to get a man's flowers. To me personally, he can only move up from the top 15. If he goes ahead and deliver a championship, we start to move him closer we started to say hey despite all this turmoil that happened in Brooklyn you came in with only playing three or four games with the Phoenix Suns and you know well not three or four in total before the season end but not you know what I'm saying not that many games before he could eventually get this championship I think that's something we had to take into correct uh, consideration if he gets a championship this season, that's spectacular. Not, a lot of people say, hey, he needs time to mold. They need time to play together. Look at Kyrie and Luka. They play, what, 15, 16, 17 games together, and they look like dumpster juice as of, as of right now. But if you can plug and play Kevin Durant in, and he missed a lot, he missed three weeks of basketball, you know what I'm saying, with the Phoenix Suns, and he comes right in, you plug and play, and he gets you a championship, bro, that's a great accomplishment. But I do feel him, though. His To me, his legacy can only get better, but the story is written. You know what I'm saying? We know that he's at least a top 15 player of all time. And y'all can call it how you want. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. But, hey, I believe him, though. He, when In short, I believe him. He, does, he might care a little bit, but I think that he's kind of taking the stuff for what it really is, if, if, if that makes sense. He's taking it for what it really is. You know what I'm saying? You can't control everything. Things happen, but guess what? I am a champion. I am a two-time finals MVP, and I am an MVP of this league, and I'm definitely one of the greatest scorers of all time. That's his legacy. Hey, can't be mad at that. Can't be mad at that because anybody is still trade so many pieces for him right now to this day. <laughs> he over 30, 32. He like 34. So... It is what it is, man. But that's it for today. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about today's topic. Does KD, is KD being honest about his legacy? If he cares or not, let me know in the comment box. If you want to follow everybody here collectively, send us an email at NBA Central Show at gmail.com and follow us on Twitter at NBA Central Pod. Y'all already know. This is another episode of NBA Central. I'm Bobby. I'm going to catch y'all on the next one. Thank you.
You're tuning in to the number one place for your basketball fix, NBA Central, hosted by the Cognac Boys.